cakes, UFO cakes. Okay, well, you did mention already that it's Eagle River, and that's in Wisconsin. And this happened on April 18th in 1961, about 11 a.m. <laughs> about 11 a.m. And Joe Simonton was in his kitchen having lunch. And so he looked out of the kitchen window to, like, what the heck is this sound? And he saw this large unknown object coming straight down. He said, almost like an elevator. It's coming straight down. And at first he thought it was a large section of his, ha of his roof. He thought the roof fell off, you know, for some reason. He was like, what the heck? And, but the roof was green and this was silver. So he was, he was confused. So he ran outside to see what it was. And he said, he, he described it as a UFO. So he said it was brighter than chrome. Like right. that it was real shiny, like a shiny silver, like not dull, like a lot of the ones that we hear about. He said this thing was about 30 feet in diameter. So it's a pretty good size, right? Okay. The object had a series of pipes around the equator of this, of this disc. It was like two saucers, one placed on top of the other and around the circumference were these pipes that were sticking out. And he said on the top portion, there was a hatch that was about six feet um, high and about 30 feet wide. He said it opened like the trunk of your car. And he said inside was a dark skinned man. Now he says that it, they looked Italian. This guy who was looking out of this hatch was about five feet tall. And like I said, he looked like he was Italian. The man didn't talk to him, but he reached inside and pulled out this container, like, like a jug that had these two handles on it and held it out towards him and made a, like a drinking motion. Like, so he started thinking, mm, I don't know what these guys are, who they are, where they come or what they're doing, but I think they're thirsty, right? So he took the jug and he went into the basement and he filled it up but he said that the the actual container was heavier than aluminum but lighter than steel the thing i forgot to mention when the man handed him the jug he was looking you know the man was looking at him and he looked at the man's face and he was scared by his eyes he said his eyes had a weird look to them um, so when he came back to bring the jug, he saw that the man was looking at him, but he didn't look up until he actually handed him the jug back. And then he looked at the man in the face again, and he said he got scared again when he looked at his eyes. So the man put the, put the jug down inside, and then um, he said that the man saluted him with the back of his hand. He didn't know what to do, so he just gave him a regular salute, you know? Um, but maybe that was a thank you. So at this point, he looked inside the hatch. And so like I said before, you know, this thing was 10 to 12 feet high. So he had to kind of look in, you know, yeah, and he, he said that the inside was a dull blackish interior. The outside was shiny silver and the inside was on, like a dull blackish color, like very dark. But he said he saw two other men inside that looked like this man, Italian, and they were strapped into some type of workstations. You know, like maybe seat belts or something like that. And he said that one of them was looking at a panel, you know, maybe a laptop, no, <laughs> monitor of some kind. And that the other one seemed to be cooking, you know, the, the man looked like he was making pancakes. From what from what it looked like, he said that the, it was a square um, surface that you know, almost like a electric um, cooking surface. Uh -huh. You know, but he didn't know what it was. He'd never seen one. 
and smoke was coming off of it and this man was making these pancakes just griddle yeah right so he looked at the guy who he gave the water to and he pointed to the pancakes and made like a hungry motion right so the guy the 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 alien or whoever he was the italian guy, the italian guy turned around grabbed a stack of them and handed them to him so he said he took a bite of one and he said it I hope that's not the only thing to eat because these taste like cardboard. He said that the man who handed him these these pancakes took a, a strap and clipped it to his belt and then reached up and closed the, the hatch. He said when it closed, it made like a thud sound. You know, like maybe it's locking or something like that. And he said once it, it closed, he couldn't see any um, no seam. He, he said it was so smooth, you could not see any seam. Maybe it was because the sun was shining off of it and the reflection, you know, because it was so shiny, he couldn't see it. Or maybe it was just that tight. He said at this point, the UFO lifted to about 20 feet. And like we've talked about many, many times before, it tilted on a 45 degree angle. And then it shot off towards the south. He said within about two or three seconds, it was gone. He couldn't see it anymore. Joe Simonton described these men as Italian, like I said before, and that they were wearing a blue knit material, almost like a turtleneck shirt um, with matching hats, caps of the same color and the same material it looked like. Word of this traveled really fast, especially since he still had the pancakes. Right? So it got all the way back to Project Blue Book. He gave one of the pancakes to Project Blue Book for analysis. Two more he gave to a Villas County um, ufologist, someone in the area. And Frank C. Carter sent a sample to NICAP which is the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena. If you've seen any of our past episodes, the one where we had um, General Sanford do his speech, right after General Sanford, um, the head of NICAP spoke, but we didn't show that in the video. One of these samples was sent to the headquarters of NICAP in Washington, D.C. for analysis. And the Blue Book director at the time, Colonel Hector Quintanella, he stated that the pancakes were sent to the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. And the analysis from the FDA was that the pancakes were plain buckwheat pancakes. Buckwheat. But the ingredients, here's a picture of the pancake here. Burnt, right? They look burnt. And look at all the holes in it, right? Yeah. The, the, they didn't know how to cook them either. <laughs> so, so this is what the ingredients were based on the FDA analysis. It was hydrogenated fat, starch, buckwheat hulls, wheat bran, and soybean hulls. So Project Blue Book consultant Dr. Jalen Hynek actually went there oh, and investigated. He interviewed um, Simonton. And he said he seemed very credible. Like he didn't seem like a like he was cuckoo. And even after this investigation, Hynek said he listed this as an unexplained, not as a hoax, not as something else, but that it was unexplained. Blue Book sent investigators, like I said, um, and they photographed the area where this thing supposedly was. There was no marks on the ground or any background radiation or anything like that. So Simonton thought maybe it was hovering just above the ground, like not actually, because he, you know, he was looking at it. He didn't really look at the ground. He's looking at this thing, you know, so it's possible that it was hovering above the ground um, because if it landed, it would have made some type of 
mark, Im impression. That's pretty much all we have for this case right now. If you know anything else about Joe Simonton or about this case in particular, please get back to us and let us know in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time on Inside the Skiff.